Hi, everyone. So, yes, I'm David. I'm working for Google, and I'm a developer advocate. But today, I'm going to be just a web developer. I'm working on a very simple application. This is a web app. Uh, it's based on too many microservices, like five or six. Uh, it's really too complex for the application, but it's, it's good for the demo. So what is my web ap application? It's a small game, a quiz, where it will show you the description of a Google Cloud Platform product, and it will show you two hexagons, and as a user, you click on which one corresponds to the description. And if it's correct, it says, yeah, it's correct. OK? Good? So I'm going to deploy that on Kubernetes, on a cluster. Uh, for my demo, it's all going to work on my machine. So I'm using a uh, Docker for Mac. Who knows Docker for Mac? Or Docker for Windows? Yeah. So I don't know if you know that, but with recent version of Docker for Mac, you can install Kubernetes with just a single click. Enable Kubernetes. And then what you have on your machine is a single, single node cluster that you can use for your development that you can use to test any application that's going to de be deployed on Kubernetes. Who's using Kubernetes with Docker for desktop already? Oh, only a few people, okay. Who's using Minikube? A bit, yeah, a few, okay. So it's basically the same, but it's, I find it a bit uh, easier to install. So back to the demo somewhere. Uh, I'm going to deploy that on Kubernetes on my machine. Um, so, I don't know if you can see it, so the colors are not perfect, but it's, it should be okay for the rest of the, de the demo. Uh, each of those uh, blue folders is a microservice. In each folder, I've got the sources for one microservice, and I'm going to just uh, use a tool called Scaffold that I'm not going to present today, but I'm going to use it to make it run on my Kubernetes cluster. So it's going to rebuild all my microservices, it's going to deploy it on Kubernetes, and it should be live in a few seconds. Yeah, demo effect, you know that. Yeah, so the thing is, my application sometimes it's working quite well, and sometimes there's a bug. Oh. OK, so now I have to debug it in front of you. Are you OK to do that? Yeah, yeah? OK. So the thing is, sometimes I see hexagons, and sometimes I've got a message. So let's take a look more closely. Uh, how do we do that? So I'm going to, uh, OK, so Chrome those days is acting very strangely. <laughs> Not my fault. OK, I'm going to open something else. I don't know why. OK, so if we take a look at the, the Chrome tools, we should see where the error comes from. So sometimes it's all good, and sometimes there is an error with this URL, slash game. Slash game, I know what it should do because I developed the application. It's returning JSON for the web app. And it's returning the list of hexagons and description. And sometimes I've got an error of 500. And sometimes it's OK. I've got, a, I've got a, some JSON. OK? OK? So there's a problem somewhere. We're going to show that with a simple curl. Curl sometimes would be JSON. Sometimes it will be an error. OK? So I think we can say. Houston, we have a problem. Yeah. I, I did this slide just way before I knew that this conference would be uh, themed on the, on the space. But uh, yeah, Houston, we have a problem. So we've deployed on Kubernetes. That would be really nice if Kubernetes could help us. Uh, it would be very nice if Kubernetes would provide uh, some kind of visibility on what was actually deployed. 
if it provides some kind of visibility on which REST endpoints were called by the users. And you, it would be even better, like it would be the dream if we had distributed traces, like the user connected to that microservice, that talks to that microservice, that talks to that, that microservice. It would be really nice to pinpoint where the bug is. Uh, bad news for you, uh, Kubernetes does not do that. Uh, Kubernetes is a good platform to deploy your applications. It can take care of auto-scaling, it can take care of uh, healing, it can take care of a lot of things, but it won't give you uh, visibility on what you've deployed. And when you start deploying microservices, it's very quickly the nightmare. Too many services everywhere, you don't know which one is talking to which, you don't know where the bug is, and it's like, uh, okay, I'm a bit overwhelmed. Um, and uh, fortunately, I'm going to talk to you about Istio. Istio is something you can install on top of Kubernetes. It's basically extending Kubernetes to, pro to provide you more features. Here's how it's working. So in this picture, you see in blue my different microservices. All of them, they run in a Kubernetes pod. Who knows the notion of pod in Kubernetes? Okay. Yeah, so basically my containers in Kubernetes, they run in pods. And a pod run on one runs on one machine, okay? Sometimes one pod can be duplicated on multiple machines if I want to, uh, to, in to increase the number of uh, uh, queries I can handle. Uh, but here, all my services, they are deployed in one pod. Uh, because I've got a single node, they're all deployed on the same machine, but it's, it's, there's no difference. Um, then, in green, you see Istio. Istio is based off multiple services. Each of them runs, run in a, a container on top of Kubernetes, and some of them will really extend Kubernetes by using the standard extension points that you have in Kubernetes. Uh, and also, what uh, Istio is doing, uh, Istio is doing something here. I'm going to, yep, something here. It's uh, injecting a small HTTP server called Envoy inside each of my pod. And those uh, HTTP server, they're gonna be the base of all the features that Istio will bring to me. Because those, those uh, HTTP servers, they will capture all the traffic going to the services and going out of the services. So when a user connects top left to my application, the user will talk to a microservice that will talk to another microservice and to another microservice. But with Istio, all this traffic will go through the Envoy proxies. And here, in the Envoy proxy, Istio can modify the query, can modify the request, can modify the destination, can do a lot of things that will bring me a lot of features. For example, because those, those Envoy capture all the traffic, they can send information to other components of Istio. They can say, okay, Here's the REST endpoints that were uh, called. OK, here's the, the time it took to answer that query. Uh, OK, I can inject uh, special headers to follow the queries from the user across all the services, and that's going to give me distributed traces. So all of those features I'm going to show to you. But the thing you have to remember is the best feature of Istio is because it can inject this envoy inside every pod, it will bring you a lot of features that you don't have to put in the code, but they are brought to you by the, the platform. Is that clear? Yeah? So one thing that we don't see on this picture, basically, is that as soon as I've installed Istio, all the traffic between my microservices is then using TLS in a transparent manner. I don't have to change my code. If my services talk to each other in HTTP, because I install Istio, they will talk to each other in HTTPS. Just magic. Because this service, instead of talking to that service directly, will go through the Envoy. Envoy to Envoy will be TLS, and Envoy to the game will be HTTP. Okay, so this is the kind of features you'd expect from Istio. Nice things that are added to your applications uh, in a transparent manner. So let's use Istio. For real. Uh, so my application is still uh, not working. Okay, sometimes working, sometimes not. We're going to see. Uh, we're going to use one of the components of Istio to see what was actually deployed on my cluster. 
I'm going to connect to a component called Service Graph. Service Graph will give me something like that. Very interesting. It will show me which services and which version of which service I've deployed on my cluster, and which it will show me which service is talking to which. Okay? So I can see that there are users there talking to the ingress component of Istio, that's talking to the hexagon UI component, then to the game component, then to the ref component, then to the DB component. So I don't have to trust the code or trust the, the YAML or trust the, the architecture document. I really have to trust Istio f on what's actually deployed. I can see a real picture of what's actually deployed. And I if I deploy new components, a new version, I will see them on this, on this graph. I think this is pretty useful. Uh, I know that the, the slash game URL that is failing is in this component. So I think there must be a problem here, or maybe here, or maybe here. Okay? It's uh, very helpful to debug, but it's not enough. Uh, what I'd like to see is what's actually happening on all the rest points that are called on my services. So I'm going to use another component from Istio. Uh, Istio is capturing all the URLs that are called on each service, and it's uh, 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 publishing those information through Prometheus, and you can see them on a Grafana dashboard. So I'm going to connect on a Grafana dashboard. Grafana. So if you install Istio, this is the kind of dashboard you have uh, for free. You will see the number of oh, what I'm sh talking. I'm going to just send traffic to my application. Just yeah, while a while loop. I think it's very useful. Uh, so you can see uh, on the top left the number of queries that are sent to all of your services. You can see the global success rate. So here I'm 90%. So there's an error some, somewhere. You can see the number of uh, 400 errors and 500 errors. So clearly, I've got a problem here. On the line below, I can see the, uh, the details uh, per service. So for example, here, I can maybe zoom in and see that, uh, I don't know if you see the colors, but on top there is orange, which is the hexagon ref. It's always responding with a good answer. It's 100% not failing. But all the other components, they are failing, okay? I don't know if you see it. Do you see it a bit? Yeah, yeah. So all those components, they are failing about one time out of two, okay? Here we're really talking about uh, the application layer. It's not monitoring the CPU or memory. It's monitoring really my applications at the uh, HTTP layer, so I can see HTTP error codes, HTTP responses. Uh, if I can see uh, uh, more details in this dashboard, like response times, response size, I can really monitor my application using uh, Istio uh, and Grafana. Okay, so this dashboard tends to confirm that there is no problem in the ref um, uh, microservice, but maybe in the game microservice that has an impact on only other services. To be sure, we're going to use the distributed traces feature that we have in Istio. This one I really love. This one will give you distributed traces without modifying your code. You could use something like Zipkin by modifying your code. There are libraries for uh, Zipkin in about every language. You could do that, but with Istio, you basically don't have to change your, your application. Uh, I'm going to connect to uh, Zipkin. I'm going to send a few queries. Yeah. So Zipkin will give me uh, stop, 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 stop. will give me that. So I can say, okay, I'm going to see what's going on at the ingress level. Find me traces, and here's what uh, Zipkin will show me. It will show me a conversation from the user to all the services, and it will show me in red the conversations that had an error, and in blue, the conversation that went well. So let's uh, zoom in on one conversation that went well. So I can see that this conversation went across five microservices. The UI, then the game, and the game called the ref, and again, 
and a third time, and it went well, and the user had a, a good response and could play the game. So we can zoom in and see which URLs were called on the ref uh, service. So we can see here that it called uh, the ref with the slash count URL. I know what it's doing. It's, it's, it's querying the, the ref, the ref uh, service to know how many hexagons there is in the database. And then it's asking for the hexagon that's going to be on the left, the 33, number 33, and it's going to ask for an hexagon that is on the right, number 31. Oh, it went well. So what's going on when it doesn't, wait, uh, when it doesn't go well? So when it doesn't go well, this is what the conversation looks like. It goes through 24 microservices, and there is an error somewhere. So we can see that the game is calling the ref, it's calling the count URL, yeah, and then it's, it's calling the ref to get the hexagon on the left, slash zero, okay, so that's the first hexagon, and then it's getting the hexagon on the right, ah, slash zero, that's the first hexagon, so you don't want to play with the same hexagon twice. So the game service needs to find another hexagon, random hexagon. So it asks for slash zero, oh, always slash zero. I don't know, there's somewhere. Somewhere in my code, I'm always asking for the same hexagon. And after 20 retries, it will just fail, okay? So using this tool, we can really see what's happening when our users connect to the application. We have the detail of all the services that are used by a conversation, and we can see the URLs, we can see the errors, uh, status code, etc. I think this is really useful. Do you find it useful or? Yeah? Yeah, okay. So you like it, good. So we've, all, we've used a uh, service graph, we've, we've used um, a graph on a dashboard, we've used Zipkin to uh, show the distributed traces. So now we pretty much know where the problem is. There is a problem here or here, and we should maybe take some time to, to fix it. So we're going to go very quickly on this, uh, on this uh, step because we're going to search for the nasty bug, and the nasty bug is here. Yeah. It would be super useful if you could just go to the code and say, where's the nasty bug? Here. OK, there's a comment. Thank you. <laughs> so nasty bug, sometimes this piece of code uh, says there's only one hexagon in the database, so it's trying to find a random one and then a second one. They shouldn't be the same, so it's looping for like 20 times. And boom, there's a bug. So we're going to fix it. We're going to fix it very quickly. This part is written in Go, but I mean, just remove the part that is annotated a nasty bug, and we're going to rebuild. Um, we're going to rebuild everything. So now I've got one version of my hexagon games that has a different version than the others. And because it compiles, I mean, we should go to production, right? It compiles, it works, right? No? No? Who think it will work? Yeah, yeah. I've heard strange stories that sometimes when we fix a bug, we introduce new bugs. I don't know. I've never seen that. Ne it never happened to me. So maybe Istio can also help to deploy our application in a more controlled manner, in a manner where we can monitor what's going on, when we can see if what we've deployed is better than it was before. Is it fixing bugs? Is it adding new bugs? Uh, does it have an impact on performance, on response times, whatever? We should use Istio to do that, and Istio is very good at that. Very good at giving you visibility, and very good at uh, uh, deploying in a controlled manner. So let's do that. Let's start with something simple, but uh, quite nice. It's going to be a Canary deployment. The idea is we're going to deploy the fixed version of the game microservice only for a few users. It will be for one user. It will be for me. User, if the user is David, the path across the services will be different. All the users, they will go to the UI, game, ref, DB in V1. But if the user is David, here, when the UI talks to the game, Istio will change the route and will send the traffic to the other version of the game. And then it goes back to the ref and DB. 
So when I say user is David, I'm looking at HTTP headers. It could be cookies, it could, could be headers. I'm going to say, okay, if the user has David in the HTTP headers, I'm going to say to the different route. And I'm going to be able to test my application in production while all the users, they are using the broken version, okay? So let's do that. So here, um, first, I need to deploy another version of my game microservice in parallel of the, the V1. So this is a usual Kubernetes deployment that's going to deploy this, uh, I mean, it's going to deploy a fixed version. So I'm going to I'm going to put a label on this version called version is fixed. The others have uh, version v1. And what's more interesting is I'm going to configure Istio. So here, this is a piece of YAML that only Istio can understand. It's not something that Kubernetes understands uh, um, when, you when you install vanilla uh, Kubernetes. You need to install Istio to recognize this new kind of object. So Istio is really extending Kubernetes to support new types of objects, new types of configuration, so that you can really configure Istio using YAML, and you can put those YAML with your source code, with the rest of the YAMLs, and then you can really uh, define uh, the architecture of your application with code, uh, including uh, routes and uh, uh, Istio features. So here, I'm going to declare a new route object, that says that all the traffic that's going to that destination, the hexagon game microservice, is going to first look at the headers. And if the user is exactly David, then we're going to change the route and we're going to send the traffic to the destination that has the label fix, not the label v1. Okay? It's just a way to reroute based on a HTTP header. So I should maybe deploy that. Uh, okay, going to deploy that, and we're going to make sure it works. Going to make sure it works. So first, make sure it still fails in production. Yeah, sometimes it fails, sometimes it's okay. So then we're going to change the header. We're going to say, yeah, I'm David, and I'd like to see the fixed version. And here, when I'm David, it's always working. Nice. So really, Istio is capturing all the traffic that's going to go to the game microservice, and it's going to change which version it's talking to based on HTTP headers. Here, I still have the version that's broken because I'm like any user, but I've got a nice, um, I've got a nice somewhere plugin on Chrome where I can set any header. So we're going to see if it works. Yeah. So I just set user David to all my queries, so I can now use the version of the application that's working. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, because it's really time to deploy, because it works for David, it should work for everybody, right? I mean, there's, I mean, all the users, they know exactly what they're doing, they're all using the same features, it should work, says Chuck Norris. Or maybe not, uh, maybe not. Maybe sometimes real actual users, they will use different features. Uh, and maybe they will trigger new bugs that you haven't seen as a tester. So a canary deployment is good because you can show new features to some users before they are deployed to other users. But it would be better to, to show it to all the users and to be able to see your monitoring tools if, if something changed, if the response time changed or if the number of errors uh, changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one thing that is really nice with Istio. I'm going to show you uh, traffic mirroring. The idea of traffic mirroring is I'm still going to deploy two versions in production, and all the users, they will see the V1 version the red line, but also Istio will take a copy of all the queries that goes from UI to game. It will take a, co a copy and send it in parallel to the fixed version of game. So it's really sending the same queries to two different services. One 
in a, a synchronous manner because it's production, and one in an async manner so that it's like best effort. We don't want to break the production by doing that. But now on my machine, on my cluster, sorry, I will see queries going to two different versions of the same microservice. And I will see real users using my game microservice, and I can see if the game microservice behaves correctly. Will it fail? Will it show more like uh, stack traces? Or will it, will it have a, a good uh, number of, uh, a low number of errors? Uh, on my demo here, I do something a bit strange. So the, the queries go to the fixed version, but they go back to the V1. You shouldn't do that. Because here you have two queries going to the database. So if you're inserting values to the database, it's going to be complicated. But if everything is idempotent or whatever, uh, or if it's read-only, like in my case, it, it should be OK. Otherwise, you'll have to deploy a completely uh, separate line, like a fixed version of game, and another version of ref, and another version of the database. Is that clear? Yeah? So here, if we do that, we send traffic to the cluster, we can uh, open our Grafana dashboard and see what's going on. OK? Let's do that. Oh, by the way, this is configured this way. Again, route rule, so Istio configuration. And I'm going to say, when the traffic goes to this microservice, I also activate a mirror to that version of the same microservice. OK? I'm going to deploy that. Oops. And we're going to make sure it uh, actually works. So we're going to, uh, what should we do? We're going to send traffic. Traffic, OK. And we're going to show the uh, Grafana. Grafana dashboard. So Grafana, here we won't look at this, this, this uh, widget. We're going to take a look at this one. This one is interesting because uh, let me explain what it does. So this one shows the success rate for every query going from the UI, uh, uh, yes, the UI to the game uh, microservice. But in green, you see the, uh, the traffic going to the V1 version of the, uh, no, sorry, orange, you see the, v the traffic going to the V1 version of the game. And green, you see, you see the traffic going from the fixed version of the game. And you can see that the, the V1 still has errors, OK? But the fixed version seems to be all good, 100% success rate. So all the queries that go into those two services, one is supposed to be fixed, and it looks like it is fixed, and one is still the one that is broken. Nice, right? So you can take a look at all your other widgets, see if did you increase the response time, or did you increase the, uh, the size of the, the response, or things like that. It's really useful to see if you broke something that you didn't expect. OK? Do you like that? Yeah? So I hear a lot of people who try to do these kind of things, not really in production, but they try to capture uh, the traffic in production, and they try to replay it on the CI, CD, things like that. But here, the idea is you, you deploy it on production, assuming you have enough machines to run both uh, versions in parallel, and you can really measure how it's going in production. The thing is, sometimes, if you do that, sometimes you will introduce new problems. You will break production. It happens. It happens even at Google. Sometimes we do canary deployment. We do these kind of things. And sometimes uh, we break uh, production. But more often, we detect issues that we couldn't detect uh, with tests, even manual, automatic tests. We couldn't detect them, and we detect them here in production. But it's not always safe. So yeah. It happens. It's, uh... So it works for everybody. Go to production. Yeah, just uh, hit the switch and switch all the users from one version to the other. Let's do it now. Now, Chuck Norris wants it to be quick. Should we do that? Uh, maybe not. Are we going to try something different? I'm not sure in production you will do the same things that I did, like canary build, mirroring. And then what I'm going to show you, but it was just to show you a few options that you can have with Istio. The last option that we can have is uh, do a, a blue-green deployment. Who knows blue-green deployment? Okay. 
For those who don't know, uh, blue-green deployment will uh, send uh, uh, a given percentage of users to one version and uh, the rest of the users to another version. Okay, so here I'm going to send like all the users through the V1, like 80% of the users, sorry, through the V1, and 20% through the, uh, the fixed version. And I'm going to change those, uh, those uh, weights so that I can monitor, change the weights, and see how it's going for real in production when I switch all my users to the new version. Should we do that? Do you do that? Do you do that yourself on your projects? Um, yeah only a few people. It's usually quite complicated. What I'm going to show you is a simple case, because obviously, uh, in reality, there's not only the routing that's complicated, there's also like database and versioning and compatibility between the different versions. You cannot always easily switch users from one version to the other, but it, with Istio, it's way easier than it used to be. It's all done with simple YAML configuration, like what I showed you before. So here's the configuration. Route rule. Now you know it. Um, you know it well. Um, what does it say? When the traffic goes to the hexagon game microservice, we're going to send 100% of the users to the V1 and 0% to the fixed version. So if I deploy that, it shouldn't change my production. All the users will go to V1. Let's do that. Uh, Blue-green. Shouldn't change. I'm, configure, I'm configuring something that has no impact on my production. Um, what should we do? Yes, we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to send our fake users. And you should still see the usual errors, because my users, they're talking to the V1, all of them. Now I'm going to change uh, the weights between the different versions. So I need to remember where it is. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, Blue-green, maybe. Yeah, blue-green. OK? So I'm going to say maybe 50% of the users. It's a bit quick, but yep. go on. Yeah, I can hear you laughing. Let's make sure it's updated. Uh, so here I'm doing too many things. I'm rebuilding, resending uh, YAML files. I would usually just send this file, or I don't know. Oh, here you can see that the error rate is maybe a bit lower. So I'm going to switch to 80%. What I should do usually is uh, open my dashboard and make sure that it's going well. Or maybe uh, I configured some kind of alert on my system so that uh, when users are uh, directed to the fixed version, something somewhere on my cluster is monitoring the number of errors. Here I'm just doing, doing it manually. So let's uh, change that. We're going to say maybe 80%. Uh, no? See? Yes? Mm. <laughs> Demo effect. Uh, did, I, did I switch it the wrong way? Okay. So, so there's a reason why it's not working, right? I'm just stupid. Okay. You should, take, you should talk louder. Like, I was like, yeah, what's going on? I should depend on you more. Yeah, it's better. OK, it seems to go very well. Thanks to you, we got it right. Mostly right. Uh, oh, I'm going to switch everybody to the new version. And we should be, yeah, it should be good, good to go. Yeah. I can finally play this very interesting game. OK, find the logo for debugger. I have no idea. Somewhere, somebody from Google? Debugger, maybe this one. Correct, yeah, plugin. Maven App Engine plugin. Oh, I know someone who should know. Yeah, correct. OK, I know the game. Yeah, we're live. 
users can actually play with our game, thanks to Istio. So to sum up, Istio added some visibility on our system. Now we can really see what was actually deployed, which version of which service is talking to which. We can see distributed traces without modifying the code. It helped us debug the, the issue. And uh, we can see, we, we saw that uh, there's many ways to deploy those fixes in production in a very controlled manner with all the tools you need to monitor if you broke something, okay? So that was Istio. Thank you very much. You can find me on Twitter, GitHub, Instagram with the same handle. Uh, feel free to ping me, and we have plenty of time for questions. Thank you very much.